at Tobas Transformational Services. I am Pastor Barbara Tober. I'm so happy you are here. And for today, we will be studying in the Old Testament. Yes, Old Testament, Ruth. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Ruth. It may be very familiar to some, to some it may not be, but this is the book of Ruth on today. Ruth verse chapter 1, verse 20. Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. And it reads as following. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. I'll read that again. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Wow. Here in this particular passage, if you go back, well, you, I tell you, you will have to go back and bring yourself up to part. But this particular verse on today in the book of Ruth, it is about a woman by the name of Naomi who left Bethlehem, which is the house of bread, went into this land of Moab and with her husband and two sons. At this particular time, she's now back where she started. And she's saying, call me Mara, which is bitter. I, I'm bitter. I'm upset. I don't like what I've been through. So if I had to subtopic this, it would be, what's your name? What's your name? Naomi is about to enter into the city and people can see her coming afar off. And she has this young girl with her, Ruth, which is her daughter-in-law, who lost her husband, which was Naomi's son. Naomi left this land of Bethlehem with the husband and two sons. But now she's coming back without them. Not that she left them there, but she lost them to death. She lost her husband and she lost two sons who had married these Moabite women, Ruth and Orpha. Orpha turned and went back. She says, you know what, I, after thinking about this and not really knowing where we're going, don't know where we want to eat, don't know where we're going to stay. Mama Naomi, I'm, look, I'm out of here. So Orpha turned back and went back. Ruth stayed with her. And as Naomi is entering to a place of familiarity, people are saying, hey, there's Naomi, there's Naomi, there's Naomi. And she says, uh-uh, don't, don't you dare call me Naomi because I'm bitter. So I ask you today, what's your name? Because perhaps life has dealt you some blows and life calls you to change your name. Perhaps you dealt with some things and you really didn't know how to quite departmentalize. You didn't know how to foul it. You didn't know what to do with it, where to put it, who to talk to, how to go about. So you said, you know what? Just erase my name. Just, just change my name because I don't like what I've been through. Perhaps you're saying that you're bitter. But the thing about bitter and better, when you spell the two words, they are very close related in letters except for one letter. The E or the I determines whether you're bitter or you're better. So you have to choose. Do, do I choose to be better by the things I've gone through or do I choose to be bitter by the things that I go through? Because we have a, a famous person by the name of Nelson Mandela who, said, who, Mandela who said, you know what, I never lose. Either I win or I learn. I'll say it again. I never lose. Either I win or I learn. So you have to take every situation that comes into your life. And you say, you know what, even though I didn't win that, she, she lost a husband. She lost a son. She lost another son. She lost some things, but what did she win from that? She didn't see Ruth as a win right now because so many times we try to walk by the things that we see, but we know the word says, you know what? You've got to leave this sight thing alone. You've got, you've got to walk by some faith because there are going to be some things that are come about and God is going to allow things to happen in your life that you don't see. It's not tangible. You can't touch it. You can't calculate it. You can't add it. You can't even subtract it. Because, but God is saying, but if you would just only hold on to your name, say, 
He says, because I know everything I gave you. He says, I knew you from the very beginning. I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. I knew you. I knew everything I had set in place for you to go through. I knew everything I wanted you to accomplish, but I needed to know, do you lean and depend on me? So God already knows. So again, I want to just reiterate over and over throughout this, you know, this time that we have together. What's your name? Is your name angry? Is your name upset? Is your name lost? What is your name? Is your name a winner? Is your name that, that I'm better? Is your, is your name that, that I'm above and not beneath? What is your name? And you say, well, well, Pastor, I know what my name is. I know what my birth certificate says. I know what the birth certificate says, but what have you allowed life to name you? So I want to encourage you today to take back your name. Because perhaps the things that you are saying out of your mouth, the tongue is a powerful thing. Perhaps the things that you are saying has stuck your growth. Perhaps the things that you are saying has stopped you from reaching your destiny. Perhaps the things that you said about yourself has caused you not to go any farther than you've gone, caused you not to reach your heights. Perhaps the things that you are saying about yourself has shut doors for you, has shut doors in your face, has shut down some things in your life. Perhaps it's not that what everybody else was saying because nobody else called Naomi Mara, but she labeled herself. She says, I'm the one who's better. I'm Mara, so what you're calling me, I'm not going to accept it. I'm not going to receive it because the thing I've gone through, you really don't know what I've gone through. So that's why I always say, stop showing up look like what, looking like what you've been through. Because even though you've been through some hell back there, you don't have to show up here looking like the things you've been through. You've got to show up and show somebody else that, yeah, you might have gone through that, but you can still live. You can still go forward. You can still make it. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay in the valley. You don't have to stay in the rut. Yes, there's a mountain to this valley, so you don't have to stay down here. You can go up to the mountaintop, but if you choose to stay here, but if you're going to be a positive part of that person's life, you say, you know what? But you may choose, but I refuse to leave you here. So give me your hand. Allow me to pull you up. Allow me to lift you up because I can't leave you like I found you. I said again, I cannot leave you like I found you. Naomi, Naomi, Naomi has labeled herself something less than what God tends for her to be. So I want you to not label yourself for less than what God says you can be. For less than what God or who God says you are. Because so many times it's easy to get off the path. It's easy to stray away. But God has said, I need you to come right back on this narrow path. And I need you to know who you are. And not only who you are, but whose you are. And when you understand whose you are, <laughs> You can walk around, and I know some people say, with an S on my chest, but I tell you, walk around with a C on your chest because you can say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the Most High. I'm a child of the one who owns everything. I'm a child of the ones who says, I can be anything I want to be. I'm a child of the Most High who says that I don't have to take no for an answer. I'm a child of the Most High who says that I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm a child of the Most High who owns everything. Houses, land, he owns everything. He says, I should not be in want because I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of the I am. I'm a child of the great one. I'm a child of the father who is in heaven. I am a child of God. And if you are a child of God, that makes you joint heirs to the kingdom. Hmm. Joint heirs to the kingdom. So we can't walk around minimizing ourselves, Saying we're not good enough because I'm here to tell you that you are good enough. You are better than what you may say about yourself. You're better than that label you've given yourself. You're better than the name you've given yourself because you are a child of God. 
Here in the book of Naomi, uh, of, of Ruth rather, we have so much that Naomi and Ruth goes through. And we all know that as, as we study this book of Ruth, that Ruth goes on and she meets Boaz. And she and Boaz have a son and this, through his lineage will come Jesus Christ. So stop using the things you see right on, in front of you to tick or top or define your next destiny. But God wants you to look so far beyond that. Use your spiritual eyes, your spiritual imagination to say that, you know what, I know this looks like what it looks like right now. But because of who I am, I know better that I can't stay better. I know better that I can't stay in this place. I know better that I've got to move forward from here. I know better that I can't sit down on God now. I know better that I can't stop talking about God. I know better that I can't deny who Christ is. I know better that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. God says, show me your weak spots. Show me where you're weak. And he says, I'll make you strong. In other words, he's saying, you can't stay here. So I say to you, just as I say to Naomi, you can't stay here because you are better than this. So after listening to this today, what is your name? What is your, I really want to know, what is your name? Because they tried to call Jesus Christ everything but Jesus Christ. They tried to say, oh, he's just another good prophet. Oh, you know what? He's just one of those preachers. He's just one of those pastors. Yeah, but he's not the Messiah. But I came to tell you that Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. We're now waiting on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has already been born. He's already given his life. And he has been already been placed in a borrowed tomb. And he has already risen on the third day. And he yet sits on the right hand of the Father. That is Jesus Christ. That is the one who says, I am not dead. I yet live. I didn't used to have power, but I still have power. It's not that he wants to be on the right hand of the Father, but he is on the right hand of the Father. He sits in kingdom. He knows everything. He knows all things. And he's waiting on us and he's asking us, child, what's your name? What is your name? So I ask you again, family, what is your name? your name but I also want to encourage you to make sure you're not labeling yourself for less than who you really are and less than for who you really are as I say to you each week thank you for tuning in to Tobas Transformation Services I absolutely love you and there's nothing, absolutely nothing, you can do about it. And I know some of you all say, well, Pastor, we miss having the direct contact with you and, and being able to say things where you can still say, you can send it in my inbox. So, hey, send it to me in my inbox, okay? I'm still going to communicate with you. I'm still going to be active with you. Maybe not live all the time, but I will be active with you. I still will answer your emails. I will still answer if you send it through my webpage. And you'll see all those links after my video plays. And maybe on the front of you, you'll see. So you still have all kinds of ways to get in contact with me. I love you. I love you. Be well. Until next time, take care.